Designing a unique website on mobile can feel impossible. You're working with such limited space that all the websites start to feel exactly the same. So in this video, I'm gonna share with you 13 unique hero section layouts on mobile that you can steal today to add flair to your designs and stand out from all of the other websites out there. Now in this video, I'm gonna start with the most common layouts first and by the end of the video, I'm gonna share some pretty unique and awesome examples. So let's get into it. So this first example that I wanna share with you is what 90% of mobile hero sections look like. And there's a reason for this. This is a really solid example where we've got our header, our subtext, our call to action, and then the image down below. And the reason that this is such a common layout is this is the only logical way to take a standard desktop layout, which is left, right, align, and then just turning it vertical, which brings that image down below. So if your mobile hero sections are looking like this, that's great. There's nothing wrong with this. I would call this all reliable. This is a great place to start. Now, our next example is only a slight variation of this where we're taking that image that's at the bottom and we're bringing it up to the top. Now, the reason that I really like this option is it gives us the opportunity to really highlight our imagery. And so with that said, this is going to become the primary focus is your image. So if you're only using stock images or your imagery maybe doesn't necessarily convey your message, you're probably not going to want to use this layout and you're going to be better off bringing the header up to the top. But if you have awesome custom imagery like this, bringing that image to the top is going to be a really fantastic way to get your message across and make your website feel a little bit different on mobile. Now, number three is another interesting option that you can utilize if your images aren't very strong. And in this example, there is no image. They're going straight for the header and the call to action. And the nice part about this layout is it's not going to get quite so congested. And you can see that they brought the header and the button down to the bottom left, utilizing the full height of that viewport and the cool thing about this is when we're holding a mobile phone it's really difficult to reach our thumb up to the top of the screen and so by pushing the content and the button down to the bottom it's going to make it a lot more user friendly and it's going to improve the user experience now obviously having images is always going to be better but if you don't this could be a fantastic option now this next option is very similar where we've got the header and the button up top the only difference is we are now able to show multiple images. Now you can see here that we've got our centered image and then an image trailing off to the left and to the right. And what this conveys is, hey, there is more of these images to see. And typically speaking, these images are going to be sliding left to right either automatically or the user can swipe them with their thumb. Now, this might not seem like it's the best idea, but on a mobile phone, people are used to scrolling left to right. That's how all of our social media platforms work. And so it's okay to utilize these sliders. The only thing we need to make sure of is that we are showing them that that's what this is, that it's a slider. And so by having these images slightly peeking out from the sides, it's gonna show people, hey, there is more to see. This next example is another great variation of utilizing this image slider. Again, we've got our header, our button, and then in this example, the images are slightly bigger because they are more custom images, and then they're just trailing off to the right side, showing that that is the direction that they should scroll. And this is an example that I prefer over having images trailing off on both sides, it just makes it a lot more clear what it is that they need to do, the direction that they need to swipe in order to find the next image. So now going back to some more standard layouts, this is a layout that I actually really like because it's not too crazy, it's not too out there, but it still feels unique. So you can see that what they've done is they've brought the image and placed it between the header and the subtext, but the only difference is all of the content is left aligned and then the image is right aligned with no padding or spacing between the image and the end of the screen. And so this again just gives it a unique feel without getting too crazy. It's still gonna feel familiar to people, but it's a great way to utilize left and right alignment to shake things up. Now this next one is pretty similar where we've got all of our content and our button left aligned at the top. And then we've got our image that is squished to the right side of the screen. And then in this scenario, it's trailing completely off the screen. Now this is an option that you can utilize 
if your image is really wide or large and it just doesn't make sense to squish it into the viewport. However, this still doesn't showcase this image as well as it could. So I would still say it's probably best to either shrink that down or in this case, it's showing a dashboard. You might as well show the mobile version of the dashboard. So this is an example that you can use as inspiration, but I wouldn't necessarily recommend having half of your image trailing off the screen unless there's some way to slide it or to view the rest of the image. The one thing that I do like about this example is that that image is slightly pouring over into the next section with that white background. This is a great way to encourage people to continue to scroll. It's going to feel like it continues, right? It's flowing down into the next section. And this is a great way to keep your users engaged. All right, so this next example is one that I really love. The first thing that I love about it is it's using a solid brand color for the top that goes behind the logo and the hamburger button and then the book button up at the top right. But then they've got a background image that starts about 30% of the way down the screen. And then the nice part about this is they've got all of the content and the button overlaying this image now this is only going to work on some images, right? We wanna make sure that there's enough contrast that people can still read the words and see the button. In this case, the call to action button is getting lost a little bit too much for my liking. And so the one thing that I would change is maybe having that button be a more solid color or a more vibrant color that stands out a little more. But overall, I love this example because the imagery is beautiful. So we might as well utilize the entire screen to showcase that. Now, I also think that this would be a great example if they just moved all of the content and the button up above into the green background. But overall, this is a really beautiful hero section. This next example uses a lot of the things that I just mentioned, where we're still using the background image, but the top part of the background image almost just fades into a plain colored gray background. And so it works really well to put our content and our button over that background uh, without losing the button or the text. It's really easy to read still. And then the image fades into a more vibrant focal point, which in this case is the cabin. Now, the other thing that I like about this hero section is they've put spacing around the edges and rounded the corners, which kind of just packages it up and makes it look really clean and unique. So don't be afraid to add this spacing, add more padding, allow things to breathe it's going to make your content a lot more consumable. This next example, we're getting a little bit crazier with our alignment, and you can see that we've got our header, which is left aligned, but then we've got a little image or a graphic or some sort of texture that's pushing our subtext out. Now, this isn't a bad thing to do. It's okay if everything doesn't align. However, we wanna make sure that some things still do align. And so the thing that I like about this in this example is you can tell that the header and then the social icons down below are still aligned. And then the cool thing is the call to action button has gotten pushed to the right and is overlapping another image or texture. Now the thing that makes this work is the call to action button has been turned into a circle so it doesn't take up quite so much width. This is a unique thing that you can try. Maybe in your desktop version of your site you have standard rectangle buttons and then in your mobile version, you have circular buttons. Now, if you watch the desktop version of this video where I break down hero sections in desktop, you will have seen that I really like these hero sections where the images kind of break up the header. It's a really unique way to use smaller images that can convey a lot more than maybe a word would if there was a word in place of this image. This is a really cool way to shake things up. I like this example because there are two separate images. There's the smaller image in the header, and then there's a larger image down below. And then they've used a slightly unique style where they're using a horizontal layout for the subtext and then the social icons. So if you can find really good imagery that even when they're shrunken down and they're really small, they can convey a lot, I definitely would recommend doing something like this. It's, it's unique, it's fresh, it feels really artsy, but I think it's something that's going to catch people's attention. So again, as long as you're not overdoing it and trying to use you know, three, four, five, six different small images crunched there into the header, I think this is a really good option. 
Now, this next example is one that I am super excited about because one thing that I constantly struggle with is the best way to utilize tabs in mobile because oftentimes you can click a tab and it's going to change the content down below, but you can't really illustrate which tab they're on or that if they click this tab, it's going to be changing some content that's too far down below that it's out of the viewport. And so this is a really cool option that you can utilize on your website hero section. If it's not a standard, you know, like content call to action button, but if you're trying to convey a lot of different options, maybe this is an e-commerce store that has different categories or whatever it might be. These tabs are really, really cool because we have four different options and as they click those different tabs, it's going to change the color of the background and then it's going to have a different image. So in this initial viewport, in this hero section, you are able to put so much information, you're able to allow them to navigate really easily and they're not going to have to scroll to get to all of this info. So this is a really, really awesome option. The one thing that's going to make this so important is the different colors of the tabs. This is going to be the best way for you to show them what tab they're on and then also having the staggered tabs because if you think about it, if the tabs are full width and then you click, for example, the red pool view tab, it's going to cover all of the other tabs and it's going to get really confusing. So this is an incredible example, a great way to lay out different types of content on your mobile layouts. I would highly recommend playing around with this and utilizing this in both your hero sections and throughout your entire website if you have tabs. So the 13th and final example is a little bit out there. You can see that this does not look anything like a traditional hero section on mobile. The first thing that you see is an image which takes up the top left. And in this scenario, it probably would be covering up a logo at least slightly. And then we've got an image down below which takes up the full width of the screen. And then we've got our header which in this case is just one word and then we've got our subtext. Now, aside from this kind of obscure layout with the images and the content, the one thing that you're gonna see which is a little bit unique is our vertical text up to the right side. Now, if you ask most designers, they would tell you there is never a good time to use vertical text because the fact of the matter is it's nearly impossible to read. And so I would agree with that you should almost never use it. The only exceptions are when you're trying to illustrate a date or numbers because that type of content is not quite so important that if it gets overlooked, it's going to be critical to the message. However, the vertical text does add a, a different flair to this section. Now, the one thing that I don't like is they've got this smaller vertical text, which I can't even read in this example, and you can tell that that is a word, I'm guessing probably a, a location, a city, a state, something like that, and it's gonna be nearly impossible to read. So I would avoid that, but again, don't be afraid to utilize different layouts the way that the images come before and after the content, maybe a little bit of vertical text when it comes to numbers. All of these different things can, again, add a, a different flair that people aren't used to seeing and it can make your website stand out. So that's it for this video. If you enjoyed the video, please be sure to hit that like button. And also, if you haven't yet, watch my video on 18 hero section layouts on desktop. This is another video that will give you great examples, inspiration, and help you level up your web design game. So thanks again for watching and we'll catch you in the next one.